So let's move on to the cost of retained earnings, which is related to the cost of equity. And why is that? Well, it's because when a company has retained earnings, they can either keep that cash, right, to invest it in growing the business, or they can give it out in the form of a dividend. So what they need to determine is what is their cost of retained earnings on that equity. And so there's three models that are used. It's going to be the capital asset pricing model, the discounted cash flow, and then the bond yield risk premium model. And so we'll go through each of these three separately. And let's start with the capital asset pricing model. So the capital asset pricing model, often referred to as the CAPM, is a very popular model as it does capture the expected return that investors want and it factors in the risk of volatility. And volatility is the systematic risk associated with a company's stock price, right? It either goes up or down, it's gonna be volatile, and that needs to be factored in to the cost of retained earnings. So starting with the risk-free rate, um, this is often referred to as the zero risk rate as well, and that is because we typically look at U.S. Treasury bonds, government bonds, right, as the risk-free rate. And why is that? Well, they're backed by the U.S. government. So they're guaranteeing that rate, and there's pretty much zero risk that they'll default. And you know, basically what would happen is the US government would have to completely default or collapse, and then there would be risk. So unless that happens, most investors say that is the risk-free rate. So if you see something about the risk-free rate or US Treasury bonds and the some percent, that is going to be the risk-free rate in the CAPM model. So moving on, we're gonna to move to beta. Now a company's beta basically measures the percent change in the company's stock price relative to the percent change in the overall market. And this just tells us, does the company's stock price, is it more volatile compared to the market or is it less volatile or is it equal? Right, so here's a quick visual. I want you to just understand what a company's beta means because a beta is going to be a number. So if the beta is greater than one, that means that the company either increases or decreases at a rate faster than the overall market. If it's equal to one, it means it moves in line with the overall market, either up or down. And then if it's less than one, that means that it moves smaller than the overall market. So make sure you understand the company's beta. It's often associated with volatility. So once we have the beta, we would multiply by the market risk premium. Now this, is calculated as the difference between the market return on average and the risk-free rate. So we already talked about the risk-free rate, the market return on average, that would be given to you. A good example of that is probably just whatever the S&P or the Dow percentage gain is in that year, right? That's what investors would say, if I invested in the markets, here's the average return. And so there's some premium, right, to investing in equity markets versus taking that risk-free rate, which is like a treasury bond, right? So there is some sort of risk premium that needs to be accounted for. So here's a quick visual on the market risk premium. I love this visual on the left for the market return. We have the bull, right? Everybody wants a bull market. And then we would subtract the risk-free rate, which again is going to be the government US treasury bond, something like that. And then that will tell us the difference there. And that is going to be the market risk premium, right? How much more risk are we taking on by investing in stocks as compared to treasury bonds? So now that we've talked through each component of the capital asset pricing model, hopefully this formula makes more sense. Now, I'll be the first one to say it's still not easy to remember. And that's because formulas like this, well, there's just a lot of moving pieces. So here we go again with calculating the cost of retained earnings for jazz music using CAPM. So it tells us the current yield on a U.S. Treasury bond is 3%. Treasury bond U.S. sounds like the risk-free rate, right? And then it tells us the average market return is 8%. Think about the bull, right? The average market return is 8%. And then the beta of jazz music stock is 1.3x. Thinking back to that visual, if it's greater than one, that means it's going to uh, move more or less than the overall market, right? So it's more volatile. And then ultimately, again, we have to calculate the cost of retained earnings for jazz music using CAPM.
So you have the formula. Let's start by calculating in step one, the market risk premium. So we take the average market return, think about the bull, so that's 8%, subtract the risk-free rate, which is 3%, those US Treasury bonds, and that tells us the market risk premium is 5%. So now we can calculate the risk premium by multiplying the market risk premium of 5% times the beta, and that's specific to jazz music, of 1.3x. So that means the risk premium for jazz music is 6.5%. And then finally, in step three, we can calculate the cost of return earnings by taking that risk premium for jazz music of 6.5%, adding the risk-free rate of 3%, and that tells us the cost of return earnings is 9.5% using CAPM. So not so bad, right? If you think about that formula, yes, it can be a little confusing, but when you think about CAPM and calculating the cost of return earnings using these three simple steps, it's not so bad, right? So let's move on to the discounted cash flow, which is another method used to calculate the cost of return earnings or equity. And so this is more focused on future cash flows. And in this case, we're talking about a dividend, right? That's the dividend that a company gives out to its investors or shareholders. And that does cost the company some money because it's paid out of retained earnings. And that is the return also that investors are getting. So looking at the formula for the discounted cash flow, we would just take the company's dividend, divide by the current market price, and whatever that result is, it's going to be a percent, then add the growth rate. Or they could just give us the dividend percent and we add the growth rate, right? So it's not too difficult. So let's go through an example and that will help you nail down your understanding. So we have jazz music again. Their current stock price is $50 per share. And then for the current year, they expect a dividend of $5 per share. Now the expected dividend growth rate for jazz music is 5%. So what is the cost of retained earnings or equity using the DCF method? So step one for the formula, let's figure out that dividend yield, right? That's gonna be a $5 dividend divided by a $50 stock price. That tells us the dividend yield is 10%. So then we take that 10%, add the 5% dividend growth rate that's expected. And that tells us the cost of retained earnings or equity is 15% using the DCF method. So not too difficult right there, just two simple steps. The formula should be fairly easy to remember, but I like to think about it in these two steps, and then you don't have to rely on your memory for that formula. Moving on to our third method for calculating the cost of retained earnings or equity, this is going to be referred to as the bond yield plus risk premium method. So a bit of a mouthful, we'll call it the BYPRP. And as you can see in the formula, it's not too difficult. It's the before tax cost of debt plus a risk premium. So let's talk about each component. So for before tax cost of debt, this is really going to be similar to the cost of debt that we already talked about, but this would be basically the yield on a bond that the company issued. And then we need to add in a risk premium because the market is going to expect a return that's in excess of the risk-free rate. And so this is similar to the risk premium in CAPM, but a little different. And if they, if they see a question like this, right, then just know uh, to factor in the risk premium, they'll likely give it to you. So let's go ahead now and look at an example. So it says that jazz music has a before tax cost of debt from issuance of bonds of 8% and a risk premium of 4%. What is the BYPRP for jazz music? So not too much here, right? It's just going to be 8% plus 4%. That equals 12%. So this method, I wanted to cover it. I wanted you to be aware of it, but it's not as common as CAPM or discounted cash flow on the exam.